Welcome back everyone. It's really summertime over here. It's extremely hot, but it won't stop me from finishing this shopping cart series here. So where are we currently at? We have our shopping cart here or our product page. You can add items to the cart and we can then successfully check out via Stripe. So that's all great, but there's one thing that is missing. We get this action drop down here, but currently it's not doing anything. I want to be able to either reduce it by one, which of course means I want to take just one item off that item group here off the card, or I want to reduce all or basically just remove this whole item. Leave all other items in the shopping cart if there are any, but remove this one. And yes, of course, you could add plenty of other functionalities to this, but the core of this series, that is called shopping cart after all, right? will be finished after that. You'll know how to create a card, how to manage it, how to check it out, and how to store it in the database after checkout. So I think that really is a lot. But before going into all this finishing talking stuff, well, let me go back and implement the functionality I was just talking about, manage this card. Back in the project, uh, let me just bring that over here. I'll start in my cart PHP file, in my cart model. Currently we get a function to add items, but since I want to be able to either reduce the item by one or remove it entirely, I also need functions for, well, these actions. I'll start with the reduce function, so I'll go into here and create a new function which I'll call reduce by one, something like that. And reduce by one will take an ID as an input because I need to know the ID of the item which I want to reduce, right? I think that makes sense. So in here, let's think about what should happen if I reduce an item by one. Well, it's kind of the opposite of the add item here. I want to reduce the quantity of that item. I want to reduce the aggregated, uh, aggregated price of that item group. And I also want to remove the total quantity or reduce the total quantity and reduce the total price. So really just reverse that. Of course, there is one catch. I also need to make sure that if I, well, reduce the item below zero, so basically if I remove the item, well, that I actually do remove it and that I don't get negative quantities or prices. So let's start with the easy part first. I'll select my items. So this items just refers to the items in my cart. And then I can select an item by ID. Remember that I'm doing this over here when I store this item, I also store it with the ID being the well key in this associative array. Therefore I can retrieve it with that ID. And then here I can access my quantity field of that item, not of the total card quantity for now, but just of that item group and well, decrement it, reduce it by one. And kind of a similar thing happens for or with the price. I select the price here and then of course I don't want to reduce it by one, but I want to reduce it by the price of one single item. So I'll use this minus equal operator to basically just set this price equal to the old price minus the, well, whatever I'm going to subtract here. And the whatever I'm subtracting here is again, my item here, items selected by ID. And then the individual item. Remember, we're storing this individual item in each item group, such as so that we have access to title description and also the price of one single item. So on that single item then, I can access the price again, and that is what I want to subtract from the aggregated price. So with that, the item group will be updated, the quantity is reduced and the price is, well, adjusted. And I also need to adjust the overall card total, so the total price and total quantity. Therefore, I'll just access total quantity. So that's now the total quantity of the card. I reduce that by one. And I also access the total price. And I want to reduce that. And of course, I want to reduce it by the very same amount. I reduce the aggregated price of this item group. So by the price of a single item, 
like that. With that, the card will get adjusted correctly and we can actually see this in action. So in order to see this in action, I need to hook it up though. For that, I'll go into my product controller and I need to add a new route and I'll add it right here after the get add to cart route or the new action to be precise since I'm in the controller. So this action should be called get reduce by one for example and I will pass an ID to that action via the router of course and then here I well what do I want to do? Well first thing is I want to basically copy the code from my add to card action here. So to fetch the old card and to create a new card. Well, of course I don't want to call a card add here. Instead, I want to call card and then reduce by one. This new function I just created in my card object. So in here, I need to pass the ID which I get passed into my controller action here. And with that, I'll reduce the card or I'll adjust the card. But of course, I also need to store it in my session. So with session put here, and of course, well, you already should have it, otherwise this old code wouldn't have worked, but make sure to have this use session import here at the top. But back to this code here, I want to put something on my session and of course I want to put this new card. That's just following the same logic I was using throughout this application with recreating my card. As a last step, step then, of course, I also want to redirect the user or return a view. Here I will redirect, so I will redirect to a route and the route to which I want to redirect is the shopping cart. So that is shopping cart. No, I think I called it shopping cart here like that. Let's see. Product shopping cart to this route here. Do I want to redirect? So we're almost there. Of course, I also need to create a new route now. And I will create it here below the add to shopping cart route. This will be a get route, of course. And I want to, well, the URL is totally up to you. I will call it reduce. And then very importantly, that's not up to you. I need to pass the ID. And of course it has to be named ID since I also named it ID in my controller here. The dollar sign is omitted though. So with that, I, well, created the route. Of course I need to configure it. So I want to use my product controller here and then the get reduce by one method I just created. And I will name this route, let's say, product reduce by one, something like that. So I can copy that already. And then I will go to my shopping cart view here. And here I got my two, well, buttons basically. The second one isn't, well, I haven't written the code for that yet, but I can hook up the first one. So I'll enter the plate template expression here. Oops, didn't mean to do that. And in here I want to call the route method to route function here to then navigate to my reduce by one route. And keep in mind, I need to pass the ID here. So ID shall be, well, I can just access this here, the product. And then keep in mind product is not an item from the database. Instead it is an array, an associative array. So here I can then access the item and again, this is my single item which has its ID in the database, so I can then also access the ID on that. So with all these changes in place, if we now go back and reload the shopping cart, we should see that if I click reduce by one, it gets reduced by one. You also see the price updated and the quantity here and the quantity in the, on the right, as well as the total price. And I can reduce again. And now that already is a behavior I don't want. The price is correct at the quantity too, but what sense does it make to have an item in the shopping cart of which you have no copies in your shopping cart in the end? So you basically try to buy nothing but still want to have it in the shopping cart. That doesn't make sense and it even gets weirder if I reduce it again. Well, now we have a negative quantity and a negative price. Well, that certainly is a great way to earn money if you would have a shop like that. You get money back after all, but not really the behavior we want here, right? 
And the reason for that, of course, is that in the card model here, at the end of the reduce by one function, we're never checking if we're, well, reaching a quantity of zero or, or lower, and we have to do that. So what I want to do here is I want to implement a check here where I basically check if this items, well, selected by the ID here, if the quantity is smaller or equal to zero, because that of course means now we have no item in the cart anymore. And then I want to remove it from the cart. And how do I remove a, an item from the cart? We can use the PHP function unset for that. And that basically allows me to, well, destroy a variable. And here with that, I can destroy an element in my items. So in order to do this, I will call unset and then unset this items ID. So this items will still persist. Only the item selected with the ID, so with the key of ID will be deleted. And with that, I remove it from the card. Now, since we got that, we can also write the function for simply removing an item from the card, remove item. So here we don't want to reduce it by one, we just want to remove it entirely. And of course, one step of removing is calling unset. But we also need to adjust the totals of the card. So we'll just copy that code. And reducing the quantity by one is not really right here because we might have had three items off that in the card. And since I want to remove the item entirely, I can't just reduce it by one. I need to remove all copies we had in the card. So to, make, to, to do this correctly, I need to subtract by, well, well, the item we want to remove, but then by the quantity of that item and not just by one. And kind of a similar thing is true here for the price. I don't want to subtract the price of one item. I want to subtract the aggregated price. And I can simply do that by removing the item here. So I'm not just selecting the single item anymore, but instead the aggregate again. With that, remove item should also work. Of course, with that, back in the product controller, I also need to add an action for that. So a public function get remove item, for example which also gets the ID passed into it. And then here, what do I want to do? Well, of course, I want to fetch my cart again. And I will also finish with the same actions, redirecting to the shopping cart and putting the new cart into my session. But between these steps, I will call cart and then remove item and pass ID. So to use the action or the function I just created. With that, this is prepared. And now, with, if I hooked it up in my routes file, I can create a new get route here, route get, and then maybe remove, then the ID, and then again, the configuration for that route. So of course I want to use my product uh, controller here, and I want to call the get remove item method or action and I want to give this route a name of let's say product remove something like that and then I can go into my view here and hook this route up I will just copy the code of my other route because technically it's very similar but I need to rename it to just product remove since that was the name I just assigned here so with that if I reload this page and well, that is rather stupid here. So I'm just removing it all. That worked as you already saw. Now let's add a couple of items here, maybe like that. And now let's try out the things we just added. I reduced this by one, looks great. Now here for a song of ice and fire, notice I have two items and notice that this makes up $20. So if I click reduce all, we should see that we only got Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings left and the total should just be $30 then. Looks pretty good to me. You also saw that it updated here on the upper right. Now if I also remove all these items here, that looks good, but there's one thing I don't like. 
I'm still on the shopping cart page and I could still click check out even though no item is left on the shopping cart. And we also should fix that. As you'll see, it really is easy to fix. I'll go to my product controller and we can apply the fix here in the get cart function, which is responsible for giving us our shopping cart view. Here, the problem we have is that we never check if the total quantity of the cart might be zero. Yes, we check if the session has a cart, but it does have a cart here and we never delete the cart. I agree that in the get remove item, we might also just forget the cart so that we check if the shopping cart still has any items. If it has items, then we well do nothing, but it has, if it has no item left after, after removing an item, we might just clear the session. So that might be worth doing. So we could basically check if cart and then items and then what? Well, keep in mind that items is an array. So we might just check if the count of that is greater than zero. If this is the case, then I want to put my shopping cart. Otherwise, it looks like, well, we have no items left. So then I might just call session forget cart, which will basically delete the cart. With that, if I reload this, well, it will still look like that. But if I add a new item, Harry Potter, and then I reduce that, now we see no items in cart because now that gets cleared. However, if I have multiple items, two for example, and I only remove one, we still have a cart. Only if I remove that is it gone and now we see the problem again. The reason of course being that I only forget it here in the get remove item action, but not in the reduce one action. However, here I also have to make sure to well, delete it if we have no items left. So I may just copy this. And yes, of course, you could refactor that too, but I think we should be fine like that. So with that, just to do a final check, if I add, let's say, these items here, and then I reduce that by one, it's gone. I reduce that by one and by one again, and now we have an empty card. And with that, we have a working shopping card. Again, I also touched on this at the beginning of the video. Yes, you could add further functionalities, but you would never stop with this series then. And I rather prefer making additional series on, well, other topics than stretching this out endlessly. You saw how to create a shopping cart, how to store it in the session, how to make charges, how to store orders in the database, how to seed your shopping cart page. If you also take my social network series on a channel account, you should also be able to work on an admin backend, which allows you to create your own products. And in the end, programming really is about all these things. You have to set your own challenges and then try to reach them. That being said, future series will come and I will touch on other interesting topics there too. Happy to see you there and I really hope you enjoyed this series. Bye.